So, how many of you guys remember what we talked about last week? Who was here last week? What did we talk about? Um, we talked about. Hold up. Yeah. Why? Okay. So, does anybody remember the race from last week? Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't fair, was it? Yeah. Right. Can I have my two people from race last week come back up, please? Yeah. Yeah. Not. Yeah. 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 Thank you for service. Right. And if you weren't here, there's a meeting. There were a lot oh, more people last week. Race. I thought you were going to be a <laughs> oh gosh! Now 
fucking run fast. Congrats, Percy. You were defeated. So, once again, the race wasn't there at all, right? I mean, Leah had weight on her ankles. That's tough to run with, right? Yeah. No? Why not, Levi? What? Okay, so Carson was, was, the, was adding the bucket in the way that this was heavier. Yeah. Yeah. So like, when you weren't as, like, free as a bird when you're running, right? Right. So, would anybody sign up for this race wearing all that stuff? Y'all are brave. Y'all are some brave. So, last week we talked about how we weighed that five pound bucket. Or so much the weight we carry. But we don't forget. It can be, it can have negative effects on all aspects of our lives. But what if the forgiveness we choose to give doesn't just lift the weight off our shoulders? Of our own shoulders, like we are making the best of Leah and putting on Carson. But also impacts the person you're forgiving to. Y'all know about that? Like when you forgive, it actually does something to the other person you're forgiving. In other words, what if forgiving others for the wrong they've done to you also lifts the weight off their shoulders and changes them as well? It's a big question, right? So where do we go to when we have big questions? The Bible. Yeah, the Bible, that's right. So, it sounds like we can turn it to the Bible and discover something that might help us with this question. So, let's head to a moment in Jesus' life when forgiveness led to some major changes for some of us. So, in our story, this event took place. Took, when this event took place, the Roman government was in charge. Because their empire was so massive, it was very expensive to run. Roads need to be built, government buildings need to be constructed. Soldiers need to be paid to finance this massive operation. The Roman government taxed everyone within their nation. In other words, government officials collected a percentage of everyone's income. To do this, tax collectors were hired. Now, there's a certain tax book we were talking about last week. Who was it? Is that kids? There you go, the kids. Well, in Israel, where our story takes place, tax collectors were among the most unpopular people around. Tax collectors forced Jewish communities to pay taxes to a government they didn't believe, they did not believe in the one true God. Rather, they supported and believed in false gods. Within Israel, there was a town called Jericho, and a man named Zacchaeus lived there. Zacchaeus, well, sounds like this place, Zacchaeus is such a long name. Let's call him Zach for short. <laughs> So that was the chief tax collector. But more than that, he was also Jewish. Most people viewed that as a traitor. Not only was he working for the government who had taken over, but he took extra money and kept it for himself. So like it's almost like you put money in the offering plate, but kind of keep some for yourself. You know how much you're supposed to put in there, but you keep a little bit on the side for yourself. Like you hold in a dollar, like in quarters, but you only get the Think about this for a moment. His career was marked by cheating people out of their hard-earned money. While everybody stacked coins, everybody stacked coins again smaller, that stash of money was getting larger. Much larger. As a chief tax collector, that could have cheated strangers, friends, and even family out of money. Nobody would have tr trusted him or appreciated his presence around town. It would have been a lonely life to someone, to one of the most hated people in Jericho. Think about it. You're cheating people that you love out of their money, and they don't want you around. Like, what kind of life is that, right? So during this time, Jesus was growing in his popularity. Prior to this story, he killed a man who can see, killed 10 men with terrible skin disease, and fed 5,000 men with a single dinner. In addition, Jesus spoke with authority. He told important messages with parables or stories on a difficult on difficult subjects like money, worry, or loving others. Large crowds gathered in Jesus' presence to see what he would do or hear what he would say. One day, Jesus traveled to Jericho. By the time he arrived, a large crowd had already formed. I went in power, right? 
that one knocked over. So, something really important is to know the fact that that is short. Let's pretend for a moment this mini marshmallow, a mini one, that's that. I realize it's hard to see, especially for those in the back of the room, but this was the kids every single day. So, these ginormous, I need these. So these ginormous marshmallows, there's some big marshmallows, right? I've never, I was, I have never seen marshmallows this big, but okay, you know. Um, the larger marshmallow represents the other people. When the Bible talks about a large crowd, when the Bible talks about a large crowd, this is what I want you to pick. Lots and lots of massive. So, after the crowd formed, something interesting happened. I need somebody to read something. Besides my same two people, I'm a volunteer somebody. Oh, Abby. Doesn't it? Okay, where are my short people? It's like five. It's like five foot. Well, probably oh, none of us have got fixers or five foot. Well, okay, okay. I am. I don't so share people. What's your slide? The shorts on my class because I don't want to share people. Sam, put your head down. I'm small. To be truthful, I don't think any of y'all can make your girls work. Kylie! I'm going to go taller. Kylie in my class, she's the same age as me, but she's five foot six, and I'm only four. I'm tall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is wrong with okay. So, can you imagine? Okay, I'm gonna turn this to the side and see what it looks like. Okay, so you got these massive town people, but you got short little people. <laughs> I think that represents the people. The problem was obvious. The crowd was much taller than Zach. From the back, Zach can see a thing. Just like you can't see our mini marshmallows sitting behind. The other large marshmallows. I can see them. Yeah. This <laughs> was this was a problem indeed. However, Zach came up with a plan to simply see Jesus. I need somebody else to read. I'm a mama tells me. Oh, okay. This part. When you read ahead and come to the temple and see the fig tree, you wanted to see the fig tree become a blossom. So he didn't have any intentions of speaking to Jesus. He was simply planning to get his eyes on him. He was so desperate to see Jesus, he climbed up a tree to get a better view. So, okay, I'm just going to make a tower. So, say this is the tree. Okay, um, I know, that reminds me of snow. So, <laughs> so now, the kids can see much, much better. Zach was able to peer over the tops of the mega marshmallows. Mega marshmallows had to got everyone gathered to see. As he watched, Zach noticed Jesus walking towards the tree he climbed. To his amazement, and certainly to the amazement of everyone else, Jesus walked up to the tree and looked up at Zach and said, Do you want to come out of here? Jesus' initial thought was Zacchaeus was. He looked up and he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down at once. I must stay at your house today. Imagine what Zacchaeus was thinking. He never climbed the tree to be seen, much less have a conversation. On top of that, Jesus knew the kids' name. Isn't that weird? Like, if somebody's coming to you in a crowd and says your name, like, how do you know? Or like, for us older, for the older adults, you go to school with somebody you haven't seen in years, and they say your name, but you don't remember theirs. Does that ever happen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, without hesitation, that caught out of the tree and welcomed Jesus into his home. Everyone around noticed. I need another reader. Ailey. So Zacchaeus came down at once and welcomed him gladly. And the people saw this. They, they began to whisper among themselves. They said, Jesus has gone to be the guest of a sinner. They did not approve of that at all. And they wonder why in the world Jesus would stay and hang out with a tax 
for it. This is further evidence of just how much people did not like that. But this is a moment everything changed with that. After his encounter with Jesus, we discovered that Zacchaeus changed. He stood up to make a proclamation. Zacchaeus said he would give half of his possessions to the poor. Keep in mind, though, that was a wealthy man. So he was very wealthy, and he could give half of his entire possessions to the poor. It's a lot, okay? Half of his possessions would have been a substantial amount. He continued and said he would pay everyone back to four times the amount. So say that that took a dollar from someone. That means he'd give them four dollars. Or he took 20, he gives them 80. He gives them 80. 80. Same thing, hush. <laughs> <laughs> you need to know your multiplication. If he gave him 25. Oh, I wasn't good at math. Math was not my best. Thing. I, I, like I math. know that. I didn't like that.
Now I want you to think about the question what does it feel like to be with you? So God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for um just learning of your word and learning like three things to forgive. Help us to forgive. And know that the weight that we carry about forgiveness is just driving us down. And once we let go of it and release to you, we will feel it ten times lighter. God, we thank you. This is your son's home. This is your son's name. Thank you.